I understand some of your approach. I mean, mm. sometimes we take a hard bite. Mm. It helps us as police. Nowadays, when I listen to you, I even panic. Why? Be, hey, why do you panic? The way, the way you, uh, uh, Papa, you know Papa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Regrettably, he bites as hard as he can. <laughs> okay. And of course, when he puts his fangs into you, you certainly feel it. I think it puts you on his bite. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hasbunallah wa neem al wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are to me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Tuesday. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. I want to say thank you to all those who support Johnny's Bite, all those who connect with us, all those who share the link, all those who like it, all those who uh, spread it, all those who make us trend. Thank you so much indeed. We are grateful. I had the Vice President of the Republic talking about mobile phones. And I heard him talking about taking taxes off mobile phones. We'll get there. But I want to ask a simple question this morning. Why are we as a country talking about expired rice fed to our children and we are finding English to explain that we fed our children expired and rotten rice, which was rebugged, which has been acknowledged has, has been exposed by Samuel Kujatua Blakwa, member of parliament. And the FDA has written to say, yes, this happened. Ghana police acknowledges that this happened. And we are explaining that we gave our children expired rice and everybody seemed okay and happy with it. I'm asking why? Where, how, how did we sink this low? I'm asking. Expired rice. They say, oh, the best before date was not. I, how did we sink so low to give our children expired rice? Rice that is spoiled, that is rotten. And then we give it to our children who are supposed to be in school for free SHS. And the free is that we're giving them rotting rice and everybody is okay. And what an upgrade of the nonsense. Why? And I'm, like, I'm just asking a question. I'm not fighting anybody. Why did we serve our children rotten rice and decide to find English to explain why we are serving the children rotten rice? Why? I'm asking a question. I'm asking Dr. Osei, uh, my good friend, Kwesi Kwating, uh, uh, I'm asking them, why, Cassandra Chum? I'm asking them, why did we find rotten rice to serve to our children? And then letters are flying left, right, center. And then we are now finding English to explain that, yes, the rice best before, 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 but I, I don't understand. I, I want to understand. So the children that have eaten the, the rotten rice, their liver, their kidney, all their, their, their organs in, in their body, etc., it doesn't matter. We are explaining it away. And the company that was able to rebag the rice. They are working free. Nobody has been arrested. To the extent that they, they are accepted to pay a fine and they paid to a point and they stopped. Why are we doing this to ourselves? Why? Rotting rice. Expired rice. Why do we do this to ourselves? I am asking a simple question this morning. If you and the people who are serving you rotten rice, they do not have their children in the schools that the children, the other children attend. They don't. I've stood here and told you how children eat rice porridge in the morning, eat plain rice in the afternoon, and eat jollof in the evening because the only thing they have in their storehouse is rice. And then when they finish, they use our buffer stock. And I'm asking, why did we allow that to happen? And why are we explaining it? Put a picture up there. Why are we explaining it? Why? 
And when you talk, they say don't talk because we have free SHS. What kind of nonsense is that? You are feeding children rotten rice, expired rice. And you are even explaining it to say that the best before date. When they say the thing is best before, do you know what it means? The people who manufacture the rice, when they say best before, do you know what it means? It means that the taste after that date will change. The taste after that day will change. We are we and we 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 rebag the thing from India to Ghana. So it looks like some ECOWAS rice that was given to us through the munificence and benevolence of ECOWAS. It took Samuel Okujeto Blackwa to expose this to us. And we are feeding our children rotting rice. Why? I'm asking the question why? And somebody feels dignified to be explaining to us why we are feeding children rotten, expired rice. Why? No, I'm asking a question. If somebody has a sensible answer, let them bring it forward. That we are feeding our children rotten rice and we are okay, we are explaining it away. I, do you understand? Omo efite, emona, wase. And then we are feeding it to the children and we find English to explain the rice. That's, oh, the rice, uh, best before, before date, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, we have transferred it from the original back package, which was from India to Ghana, and we are feeding children rotting rice. And I'm asking myself, why? Why do, why do, why do we do that to our children? Why? Why are we so wicked towards our children? And the whole clarion call is, oh, it's free SHS, it's free SHS. Free SHS, oh, how money if they? Oh, money if You don't do that. You don't do that. That's the rice on your, on your screen. Repackage rice differently, different identity. And we, we, we're actually misleading the people and we sent it to the schools. Presec Lego, I'm told, was the, the hub where the rice was rebagged, repackaged, stored, and there was distributed from everywhere to everywhere in, the, in this country. Why do we do that to our children? So the next generation doesn't matter. Sport rice, rotten rice. That's what we are doing. Hey, find me the nurse's video. I see if that is not enough. Yesterday, a Napco person sent me a message. He said, ah, we have been deceived again. I said, you, you deserve to be deceived. You all know you deserve, you deserve to be deceived. The Napco person sent me a message, oh, we have been deceived. I said, you deserve to be deceived. One day, they didn't pay you your money, and they convinced you. And over, the, over, the, over this weekend, the soldiers and the police people and fire service, they will get extra money, like was done to them in 2020, and it will be padded, and they will go and vote in a certain way. I'm, oh, I'm telling your authority. The extra money that the security people had, they will have it again. And they will be fooled to go and vote in a certain way. And then they will come and be worrying me that our uh, rent allowance has not been paid. Our this allowance has not been paid. Our house allowance, they will come, they will come back. An Napco person told me that we have been deceived again. I say, you deserve to be deceived. You, you deserve to be deceived. Play the video. Simon News tonight, more than 300 enrolled nurses from the 2020-year group across the country on Monday stormed the premises of the Greater Accra Regional Health Directorate over government failure to engage them after going through due procedure. Stanley Nibli, who has been following up on this development. This category of nurses have been at home after duly writing and passing their licensure examination and obtaining their pins in 2020. The nurses subsequently heaved a sigh of relief when the Ghana Health Service announced the activation of its portal for recruitment. On Monday, 
the enrolled nurses, some of whom are lactating mothers, numbering over 300, reported to the Greater Accra Regional Health Directorate to be absorbed into the system. But they had the shock of their lives when the human resource manager at the health directorate told them that only 30 nurses are needed to satisfy the quota given to the region. The 30 nurses will be posted to the Adan East and West districts, where human capital in the health sector is in short supply. But these developments did not go down well with the unposted nurses. It's pathetic, finished with us. I feel like crying. Serious. It's not easy. Some people depend on their parents for money. How your parents get up for you for four good years, you can't pay them back with anything. Veronica Anoche was not happy and called for an immediate intervention. It's not fair. But as at now, we don't know what to do. And it's unfortunate we have to go back home. And place you. Please do get us. So I will advise that you go home so we get directing from headquarters. No, we cannot. That's why I'm not saying you are not going to be employed. Since the quota, uh, the quota didn't uh, block you, you have registered. We are waiting patiently for them to give us the quota. Now they've given us that. Right. If they give us another, then it means we will put add on. But for now, the 30 is exhausted and we can't take any more. If you can, you sit here 10 hours, 100 years. Unless headquarters gives us the directive, we cannot. I'm being fed. I'm being fed. So please, let's pray. And, and sisters will tell you that we are everywhere. So we were there. The woman says that only 30 people had been given clearance. So you look at the number of nurses. Dr. Bernardo Kuba, good morning to you. Dr. Nsian Saria, the presidency senior advisor on everything health to the president, good morning to you. Dr. Patrick Kumabwaji, Director General of the Ghana Health Service, good morning to you. And all the directors of the, of the health service, good morning to you. In any sane country, when people go and learn or read nursing and for their medicine, etc., they get employment. Why have we made it? And the, the argument is made that, oh, we are giving them nursing training allowance, teacher training allowance. They have finished school. They are sitting for exams to get their pain. They are paying for it. And they don't have jobs. And you are comfortable. You are happy. I will bring you an extensive list of the people who have been put into the National Health Insurance Scheme. I will bring you an extensive list. Look, the, the nurses now, when you meet them, they cry to you. They weep to you because the monies that they have to pay for their pain, they can't afford it. They are jobless, but they have to regularly, regularly be on that so they can write the exam and get the pain so that they are active. Regularly. And when you talk, they say, don't talk. Then we go and buy back page. Stop Galamse, Nanado, Abujinapo, AEC. They have their photos there. Meanwhile, this month, Nanado, who says, I am prepared to put my presidency on the line. He has never been able to man up to speak to organized labor or disorganized labor on what he's going to do about Galamse. He went to COP29. To go and tell the whole world that we have planted 50 million trees. And in addition, more than 72 hectares of land is being reclaimed. He didn't tell the world that he, he has signed a, a legislative instrument that has declassified forest reserves. And that has declassified part of Achi Imota, that Gamanche. And Ni Adotio Tinto said, they are investigating. He, ha he has not been able to tell them. He has not been able to tell them. But he has bought back page, full page. He says, stop Galamse now. Who is stopping Galamse? The party people who have been mentioned in the Kwabna Report, Boate Report, 
Has he been able to hold them? The party people who have been mentioned in the Kabinaf Reform Bwati report, has he been able to hold them? Take me, let's, let's talk about phones. Show me a slow also Kufo's video first. The, the picture, the screenshot, put it on the screen. Says smartphones for all citizens by 2020. As Laoswe Kufu, Minister for, uh, uh, yes, December. Yes, when we were going for the election, we were told that, yeah, we, everybody will get a smartphone. All the children will get tablets. You remember that? It was in the same year that we were told that all the children will get cocoa drink and chocolate and boiled egg. You remember that? And one free lunch. Nana Dada, he lied to us all. We were all fooled. They said smartphone for all citizens by 2020. Which year is this? 2024? Where are the phones? Now, a large phones is promising. Play the video. Let's listen. Memunuso, Minim say, when you be up a mobile phone, maybe for mobile phone prices, no upper form, no taxes on mobile phone imports. We are bringing down the import duty, we are eliminating the import duty on mobile phones so that mobile phones, no buono, a beba form, amamo, and also the cost of data. We are going to bring down the cost of data, the cost of data for our youth. Namu it menya, and we make you calls. Memunuso, minim se, when you be up a mobile phone, maybe for mobile phone prices, no, upper form, no taxes on mobile phone imports. We are bringing down the import duty, we are eliminating the import duty on mobile phones so that mobile phones, no, no, a beba form. What do you want to say now? Put the screenshots up there again. What was said then and what is being said now? What do you want to say now? We are just doing simple fact check. Oh. Put the screenshot up there. Say mobile phone for everybody, smartphone. By 2020, everybody will have a bank account. When, when you ask about the bank account, they say, oh, it's your Momo account. Your Momo is your bank account. As long as you this was covered daily, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, Ghana Web. Now, a large phones is talking to us about reducing uh, uh, what, what were we promised then? What has been achieved? It's a simple question. What was promised then? What, was, what has been achieved? Or the same bossu madam who told us that whenever the light goes off, she curses John Mahama. Today, when the light goes off, who do we curse? No, I'm asking you a simple question. Who do we curse? We still curse John Mama. Or who do we curse? Is that when the light goes off, he curses your mama. Then somebody also came to say that, oh, if it's all about borrowing, then my 12-year-old son can borrow. And what have we borrowed as we speak? I'm asking a sim very simple question. The same things that were said. I'm asking simple questions. There's an another video. Find it for me. You know, Nanado Dankwe Kufado, he has given Alan Kojo Tremanting a raw deal. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Ah, put, put up there. Put, put, the, put, the, put the thing up there. <laughs> Sister, you're too bad. <laughs> put the thing up there. Let's fact check it. Has government provided free Wi-Fi for over 700 SHSs? Put it up there. Alaji is, is the king of digitalization. This 700, these 700 schools... 700 free SHS. How many free SHSs do we have in the country? How many secondary schools do we have in the country? Doc says, oh, we have provided 700 uh, Wi-Fi's in all the country. How many secondary schools do we have in the country? And have we been able to provide all of them with Wi-Fi? Ask Alaji. No. So government promised uh, to provide free Wi-Fi. The initiative to provide schools with Wi-Fi was sent was at the heart of the governing new patriotic party's educational policy that brought them into power in 2016. 
The promise was captured on page 32 of the 2016 manifesto of the MPP. Collaboration with the private sector, that's a quote, uh, to provide free Wi-Fi coverage for senior secondary and tertiary institutions nationwide dedicated to learning and administration and enhancing the capacity to do research, the manifesto stated. In 2020, in the 2020 manifesto, the party reported that contracts have been awarded for the project to be completed. The 2020 manifesto put the total number of senior high schools in Ghana at 722, 722. Contracts awarded to provide free Wi-Fi connectivity to all 722 SHSs, 46 colleges of education. In fact, we have 47 colleges of education, ally, right? And 60 regional offices, 260 districts offices, MPP's manifesto stated on page 57. Go back to the schools, ask them, do they have Wi-Fi? And that is integrity. Now, fact-checking. Using the right to information law, fact-check Ghana wrote, Rabiu, good morning, to the Ghana Education Service requesting the number and list of schools that are beneficiaries of the free Wi-Fi project. According to the GES, as of March 10, 2022, the free Wi-Fi project had been completed in 663 senior high schools, but it was put on the performance and delivery tracker that we have done over 700 schools. Mm. And being connected to the Wi-Fi, the remaining beneficiary schools receiving the government Wi-Fi in 2021. Thus, Dr. Baumier's claim, which has been repeating since 2021, that the free Wi-Fi project has been completed in over 700 schools is therefore inaccurate. The VIPS claim is inconsistent with data from the GES. Below is a regional breakdown. I, I don't want to bore you. So it's, it is possible that the lie was told. Eh? Now, let's check it. Look at it. It is possible that a lie was told. It is possible that a lie was told. A lie was told. It is possible. A lie was told. I'm just fact-checking. A lie was told. It is possible. This is the data from GES. It is possible that a lie was told. And go, take me back to the Duncan Kufado. Listen to him. Duncan Kufado. Let's listen to Nanado. Let's listen to him. So the decision you have made will bear fruit for us next year. I hope my colleagues will forgive me if on this occasion I signal out one particular one. The young man who gave me such a big run for my money. <laughs> and who has shown and this is first intervention in our national politics. But the talent, the drive, the energy are all there. All I can say to him is what my predecessor's friend said to me many years ago, and I've never forgotten it. After our contest in 1998, came to my house tell me that he has to be president first before I become yeah. president. Three M nine. This was Nana Adodankwe Kufado extolling Alan Tremanti and telling him that he will go first before him. How Nana Dodankwe Kufado departed from Alan Tremanti and went to Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is another story that has to be told. But he gave him a raw deal. And we have the details. We'll bring it to you. Today, is he able to look in the face of Alan Kojo Tremanting, who was at Empretec, has hatched a lot of businesses, etc., and nobody has been able to put a corruption tag on Alan Tremanting? Nobody has paid me to do anything. I'm, I'm saying it because I know. Has Nanado been able to confidently? When I heard President Kufo, my heart. They ached. Yesterday, I was watching a conversation with Mr. Freddie Blay and lawyer Chachuchikata, uh, two lawyers. 
Now I was asking myself, are we talking emotion or are we talking law? When that letter was written by Justin Kodia from Pong, what was Mr. Freddie Blaze's position at the MPP or in the MPP? Today, we are departing from what the constitutional provision of the MPP says. And we are moving into the domain of the unknown relative to what is happening in Parliament. Look, tomorrow morning, I will share a detailed list of those who have been employed. And then I'll make a case for the nurses. And there are some doctors at Kolebu. Do you know that the nurses, even without employment, they had to pay for money. They have to pay money to get their pay. Do you, did you know that? I'll share a list with you. It will sink your heart. Look, there's a gentleman. Georg has come to disclaim that, oh, they have not sold their bus guard factory, blah, blah, blah. I told you about it, right? And I told you about a Galamse site that is connected to somebody at Georg. Play the video. I spoke of my trip in Antigua, I had to make a stop over here. We'll come to it later. Have a good morning. Call me 055-924-2717 and 055-691-0154. 055-924-2717 and 055-691-0154. We'll see you shortly after the break. Connect with me here on 3FM 92.7, your Urban Lifestyle Radio, and we will be on.